Welcome to the Summoner 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to forget how to poison people overnight better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you could research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heaven Sword skills, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for a video about it. I keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes, or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Summoner is a mage DPS that answers the question of what people are asking for when they ask for everything to be on one or two buttons. While you have some amount of flexibility, and every job has their minor points of complexity, Summoner is likely the most simple job in the game. More than half of your time will be spent hitting a single button over and over. The rest of the time, you're playing with Legos. And yes, that is the community accepted term. Early levels, you're giving yourself a boosted attack and moving to small summons that give you stronger attacks. Later levels, you're going from big summons that does big attacks to slightly smaller summons that make your attacks do big damage, and alternating back and forth. The slightly smaller summons that augment are a big point of flexibility for you, allowing you to summon them in any order. You have little to no cast times, making you the most mobile of the mage jobs, and the absolute flashiest. To play an Arcanist, you either start as one, or pick up the class in the Limsa Lominsa Arcanist Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the final details of each skill. Level 1, Ruin. With a 1.5 second cast time and costing 300 mana, this simply does 240 potency of damage to a target. You're going to be hitting this button most of your time as a summoner. Like, more than 50% of the time, really. Level 2, Summon Carbuncle. This is the most important button in the entire game. It has a 1.5 second cast time, costs 400 mana, and summons a blue carbuncle. What does it do? You're looking at it. Looks very cute. Well, there are other things it can do, and you should always make sure you have out your carbuncle. Not just because he is the cutest cheerleader, seriously, make sure he is out at all times. He also comes with an extra hotbar, the pet hotbar, with six buttons on it. Away, you will never have a reason to use this. Heal, the pet will follow behind you. You have cause to use this at times after using one of the next two buttons. Place, this will allow you to select a location to make Carby move to. Later on, we will have cause to put Carby next to bosses before we engage with them. And this is why we have heal. After a boss is dead, if they are still in their position and not following you, heal will draw them back into you. Stay. Less useful than place, Carby will stop moving. Unless you are walking by where you want Carby to be, place is more efficient way to get it done. Guard and steady. Literally worthless. Ignore these. So simply put, place and heal are all you care about within these buttons. Level 2, Radiant Aegis. This is an ability on a 60 second cooldown. This causes Carbuncle to put a shield on you with 20% of 
of your maximum HP. This shield lasts for 30 seconds, though given you're a mage, most enemies will get through this in less than half that time. This is your main defensive ability. Make sure to use this early and often in solo content. And even during party content to reduce the damage you take from unavoidable attacks. Especially important later on when unavoidable damage is a lot higher. Half your health, 75% of your health, or even 90% in the highest levels of content. An extra 20% buffer on top of whatever healing and mitigations are up is a lot of help. Dungeons, raids, trials, it's all good for reducing damage. And since you don't need to stop attacking to use it, you lose no damage either. And a bit of warning for this, and a skill we'll get to later, you cannot use Carbuncle skills if Carbuncle is not on the field. So even if it's only for 5 seconds, if a skill makes Carbuncle disappear, you cannot use Radiant Aegis until he comes back. Level 4, Physic. 1.5 second cast time and 400 MP cost, this restores 400 potency of healing to a target. Please, for the love of God, stop using Physic. When you're out in the overworld, fine. Use it as needed so you can complete solo duties alone. You can clean up solo mistakes with this, but in party content, you are not the healer. You are not. If someone is missing HP, don't touch Physic. Let the healer handle it. If they let someone die, let them learn from their mistakes. Further, by level 30, this skill is already starting to fall off in effectiveness. Physic scales based off of mind, which a summoner does not ever use. And at level 50, Physic becomes almost entirely worthless. You'll be healing less than 10% of a tank's health per heal. And by 90, you will still be healing at most 600 HP. Please, let the healers heal. This won't be on my hotbars at any point. Level 6, Aether Charge. We have a cute new Carby Gauge thanks to this skill. I wish we could keep it. But anyway, on a 60 second cooldown, but still counting as a spell, this buffs your Ruin, Ruin 2, and Ruin 3 by 50 potency, and Outburst by 20 potency for 15 seconds. We don't have most of those! But basically, this means Ruin will do 290 potency of damage every cast for 15 seconds. This timer is shown on the gauge. Just spam Ruin until the timer runs out. And you can't use this until battle begins. If you try to activate it before the fight, it won't work. When the 15 seconds run out, you will gain Ruby Arcanum. The red Lego gem on the Kirby gauge will light up. This is where the next skill comes into play. Level 6, Summon Ruby. This is an instant cast spell. It summons Ruby Carbuncle to execute Glittering Ruby and attack for 400 potency of damage on the target. Afterwards, your normal Carby will return to your side. You will also be granted two stacks of Fire Attunement, as shown on the gauge. These can be used on the next skill. Level 6, Gem Shine. This button does nothing on its own. You can't even use it. However, when going through your different phases of attack, this button will change. One of these times will be any time you use a Lego from your gauge. In this case, we just used Summon Ruby and got Fire Attunement, changing Gemshine into... Level 6, Ruby Ruin. With a 2.8 second cast time, higher than the usual 2.5 recast, and costing 300 MP, this deals fire damage to the target. 300 potency worth of it. Despite being slower, this is stronger than Ruin, and each use of it spends one of our Fire Attunement stacks, meaning we get two Ruby Ruins. After two uses, all we can do is go back to spamming normal Ruin. So up to now we can start the battle with Carby Summoned, use Aether Charge as soon as it becomes available, use our extra power until it runs out, use a Lego Gem, spend the Attunement on Gemshine, then go back to Ruin until the next Aether Charge. And congrats! You now know how to do summon it up to level 85, basically. Don't believe me? Follow along and we'll see that while we get more stuff, it doesn't exactly change this core rotation. At level 8, we have the roll action, Addl. This is your first roll action. These are important extensions of your toolkit, and you absolutely want to be using them. Other than the rare exception, 
I will not be going deeper into details about these skills. If you would like more details on these skills, head to the description or the card in the corner to see what these are about. Also at level 10 is Sleep. Level 10, Energy Drain. We got another UI element out of this one, two diamonds of Aetherflow. These get filled anytime we use Energy Drain. This has a 60 second cooldown timer, deals 200 potency of damage, and gives us Aetherflow 2. And you can weave it between spellcast without delaying your next spell. While the 200 potency of damage is nice, the big important bit is the Aetherflow we got. We have two gems of it to spend, and spend it you should. Spend it on... Level 10, Fester. Instant cast because it is an ability, and one second recast. This deals 300 potency to the target, requiring one stack of Aetherflow. So every use of Energy Drain lets us use two Festers, for a total of 800 potency every minute. Because of your cast times being 1.5 seconds, you can weave in one of these per cast. Ruin, Energy Drain, Ruin, Fester, etc. It's basic, but some extra interaction every minute. This will get a bit more later on too. Level 12, Resurrection. With a very long 8 second cast time and costing 2400 mana, this revives a fallen party member. Ideally, you never use this, but people do die, so you will end up using this. Ideally, you let the healer handle it as well, but if the healer is the one who died, or the healer is busy trying to keep everyone alive due to big mistakes, the revive falls to you. Don't be over eager to raise a fallen teammate, but don't ignore this either. Mid-battle raising can make or break the difference between the group wiping and harder content, especially if it is a healer you are picking up off the ground. Level 15, Enhanced Aether Charge. First off, this is a class quest skill. You must be doing your class and job quest to get your full toolkit. If you get to a new skills level and you don't get it, go do your quests. I will not be verbally pointing this out anymore after this point, but the top left will have the class slash job quest element whenever I'm going to offer a new skill that fits this. But enhanced Aether Charge, Aether Charge now gives you a second Arcanum, Topaz Arcanum. You get both your Ruby Lego and a Topaz Lego on your Carbuncle Gauge. So let's talk about the Topaz Lego. Level 15, Summon Topaz. Instant cast just like Summon Ruby. This summons a Topaz Carbuncle to bop the enemy on the head with a 400 potency hit. Big hit, and four charges of Earth Attunement, as shown on the Carby Gauge. So now, look what Gemshine has become. Level 15, Topaz Ruin. An instant cast and costing 300 mana. This does 240 potency of damage to the target, costing one Earth Attunement. This is the same power as Ruin right now, but you have the ability to walk around while using it. Move into a better position closer to the party, avoid AoE sent at you, whatever. The 400 potency hit from Topaz Carbuncle is enough for you to want these available. Get used to using Topaz Ruin anyway, as later, it is stronger than just a normal Ruin. At level 18 is the roll action Swift Cast, and this one is very important for Summoner. Not only can you use this on Resurrection for negating that 8 second cast time, we're going to make this part of a normal rotation in ideal circumstances. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This boosts your base damage and healing by 10%, and you shouldn't be using Physic outside of solo content. At this low level, you may not even notice a difference. A permanent 10% damage boost is great in theory, but when enemies are gaining an equal 10% HP buff on average, and your numbers are already so low, you likely won't be able to notice. Level 22, Enhanced Aether Charge 2. Same as the first time, this upgrades Aether Charge. Now you get three colors of Lego, Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald. So let's use that Emerald Lego. Level 22, Summon Emerald. Same as Ruby and Topaz. Summon a Carby to bob the enemy with 400 potency of damage, this time granting you four stacks of Wind Attunement for Gemshine casts. This one is a bit unique though. Level 22, Emerald Ruin. This is an instant cast spell 
but has a recast of 1.5 seconds, meaning you can cast more spells faster. Also, it costs the usual 300 mana. Despite it causing a very small 160 potency of damage, this does more damage than Ruin, because you can cast them very fast. Be ready to just hammer the button for the next 5 seconds, because that recast timer is a lot faster than 2.5 than it might otherwise feel. So now with 3 Legos, we cycle through all 3 one at a time. Ruby, Emerald, Topaz, or Topaz, Ruby, Emerald, or any of the 6 possible patterns. All 3 are worth it. Even Topaz, being the worst with being equal in power to Ruin, is worth it for the ability to walk around. And again, later on, the use of these will change slightly, become stronger, and will definitely want us to use all three every time we can. So let's do an opener and rotation example, just for the practice. Pre-pull, summon Carbuncle. Ruin, Aether Charge, Ruin, Energy Drain, Ruin, Fester, Ruin, Fester, Ruin, 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 pick a Lego, spend the stacks, pick another Lego, spend the stacks, use your final Lego, spend the stacks, spam Ruin until you can repeat. The big thing to realize is how often you use the same two buttons through the whole thing. You're not trying to react to different cooldowns or anything. There are 7 Ruins and 10 uses of Gemshine, and essentially, this is your opening rotation now and forevermore, up until level 86. Currently, the only real thinking you have to do is the order of your Legos. At level 90, there are two currently accepted openers, with the general one we go for being Topaz first. And this is due to raid buff timings. If you aren't trying to fit around raid buffs when playing with your Legos, you should pick the order that best flows with the fight. For example, you get into your Lego phase, and the boss is about to do something extremely movement-heavy. You do not want to be using Ruby. Use Topaz, since it's four free spells of movement. If it's still going on, use Emerald too. Then, when you can stop moving, use Ruby. Or let's say you know the movement-heavy stuff is coming, but you can currently stand still. Use Ruby first. Then use Topaz and Emerald once the movement begins. And further, Swift Cast can be used for Ruby. As you may notice, I snuck it into the rotational image. As an average player, you may want to just take the slow cast time so you have Resurrection in your back pocket. But if you want to squeeze in as much damage as quick as you can, and as safely as you can, you can Swift Cast one of your Ruby Ruins. Other than this, you just pick at random. If you think this Lego is good now, use it. And the only other question I suspect you might have is why we wait so long to use Energy Drain. As I mentioned earlier, openers plan around raid buffs, so we delayed just a little to get these under raid buff windows, which nobody has at this level, but later on they will. And finally, all of your skills are either AoE to begin with, or have AoE versions. You have an AoE version of Ruin, an AoE version of Gemshine. Your single target rotation is your AoE rotation. Just replace any single target versions of skills with AoE versions when you obtain them. Some, like our AoE Energy Drain, don't come in for a very long time, but you otherwise just go from one to one. Now let's do what is dubbed the Karaoke Opener. I'm going to speak the names of the skills as I use them. If I ever sound like I'm tripping over myself, or overlapping, that's due to how quick you can be hitting the buttons to get your skills out. The skill names will be spoken as they come out. Ruin. Aether Charge. Ruin. Energy Drain. Ruin. Fester. Ruin. Fester. Ruin. 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 Topaz Lego, Gemshine, 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 Emerald Lego, Gemshine, Gemshine, 
Gem Shine, Gem Shine, Ruby Lego, Gem Shine, Gem Shine, Ruin until you can repeat. And again, this basically covers the job for most of the leveling curve. Let's continue on and see how. At level 24 is the roll action, Lucid Dreaming. Level 26, Outburst. 1.5 second cast time and costing 300 mana, this hits an enemy and all enemies within 5 yarms of the initial target with a 100 potency of damage. This is our AoE, or Area of Effect Attack. If there are 3 or more enemies to fight, this is better than Ruin. 300 damage is more than 240, obviously. Anytime there's a group, small or big, do this instead of Ruin. And let's take a quick reminder about Aether Charge. This increases outburst damage by 20, making it to 120 potency per enemy for the duration. And even if outburst got zero buffs from it, three enemies it would still be better than Ruin. Level 26, Precious Brilliance. At the same time as getting outburst, we get Precious Brilliance. This is the AoE version of Gemshine. Once again, you cannot use this on its own. It does nothing. However, let's talk about the things it can become when you use your Legos. All of them cost 300 MP, by the way. Level 26, Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald Outburst. Starting with Ruby, it has a 2.8 second cast time, just like our Gemshine version, and does 140 potency to the target and all enemies within 5 yarms of the target. Topaz is instant cast, 110 potency within the 5 yarms, which is actually just straight better than Outburst. Emerald is 70 potency with the very quick 1.5 second recast and no cast time. Now instead of being stuck using Ruin and Gemshine, we use Outburst and Precious Brilliance anytime there are 3 or more enemies. Ruby is actually the strongest of these at the moment, doing 50 potency per second while the other two are in the mid 40s, with Titan being the weakest. Overall, you're going to be using all three no matter what, but that power ranking could change how you order your LEGO kit. Till later levels change the ranking anyway. Level 30, Ruin Mastery, and Ruin 2. Simply put, an upgrade to Ruin. Same cast time, same mana cost, but now does 270 potency of damage. Not very exciting for a class quest skill, but hey, it's there. Also there, and gained at the same time as Ruin 2. Level 30? Ruby Ruin 2, Topaz Ruin 2, and Emerald Ruin 2. These are just straight power boosts to your Gemshine skills. Ruby has gone from 300 to 340 potency, Topaz has gone from 240 to 270 potency, and Emerald has gone from 160 to 170 potency. Just power boosts, enjoy them. To obtain the summoner job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Arcanist quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest self-management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Ruby Summoning Mastery, and Summon Ifrit. This is an upgrade to summon Ruby. Instead of summoning a cute carbuncle, you summon an ugly Ifrit Eggy. This does 500 potency of damage instead of 400. The button otherwise works the same. Add some flavor though. Level 35, Topaz Summoning Mastery, and Summon Titan. This is the exact same as our Ifrit upgrade, but instead, turning Topaz into a chicken nugget. Now it does 500 potency to the target instead of 400. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Second first, same as the first. Now it's a 30% boost to damage. You may actually notice this one because it's an additive 20% and numbers are starting to get big at level 40, but overall, again, you won't really notice it. Enemies are getting stronger too, and it's more of an intended buff within the first 50 levels. Level 40, Pain Flayer. This is our AoE use for Aetherflow. Rather than using Fester during AoE, we want to be using Pain Flayer. It does 150 potency to all enemies hit. On two enemies, it's equal to Fester. On three or more, way better. Summoner is pretty firmly a job you want to use AoE on three or more enemies on average. Otherwise, just remember to keep using Energy Drain on cooldown and spending the Aether Flows. At level 44, our last roll action, sure cast. Level 45, Emerald Summoning Mastery and Summon Garuda. 
Alright, this is going to be really, really weird. Summon Garuda is both an upgrade and a downgrade. Summon Garuda is no longer a 400 potency hit to a single enemy. It is a 100 potency hit to all enemies within 5 yomps of the initial enemy. So in AoE situations, this is an improvement. On bosses, this is a straight up downgrade. To the point that it feels like an oversight when they were changing Summoner to the upgraded Endwalker toolkit. Don't believe me? Let's look at... Level 50 and Kindle. So, I say it's an oversight? Well, every summon now does 600 potency of damage and is an AoE that does 60% less damage to every second or further enemy, which is 240 potency per enemy. Even Garuda. All three of them do this. The difference is the shape of the AoE. Ifrit rushes up towards the target and does a 5 yom cone in the direction of the target. Titan runs up to the enemy and does a 5 yom AoE around itself. Garuda shoots an AoE at the target, and all enemies within 5 yoms of that target get hit. By far, Garuda is the easiest one to use for AoE. Since single target, it doesn't really matter what the shape of the AoEs are. Titan has a full circle, which means they have the most potential. But he always seems to use it early and not capture the full range of enemies he could. Ifrit just outright has the worst potential enemy count, but he seems to use it in better positions, which may actually put him above Titan. Otherwise, once again, just a potency boost. The good AoE now, and not just single target hits. For a post-level 50 note though, you may have noticed that my Eggy summons were always blue carbuncles. That is because if you return to the Summoner Guild, there is a small side quest to unlock Pet Glamour, which is extremely nice to have the superior summon always show up. If you disagree that Emerald is the best summon, you need to get good. Scrub. Level 52, Energy Siphon. This is our AoE version of Energy Drain. It shares the same 60 second cooldown as Energy Drain, and using either of the skills, both will go on cooldown. Energy Siphon itself, meanwhile, is a 5 yom AoE around a target. It does 100 potency to every enemy hit meaning it's better than Energy Drain on three or more enemies. Once again, that three plus enemy count is further emphasized for AoE. Make sure to get this out every time you can, and throw out some Pain Flares as you can manage. Level 54, Ruin Mastery 2 and Ruin 3. Ruin 3 is an upgrade that replaces Ruin 2. It does 300 potency per cast, just a potency boost. Level 54, Ruby, Topaz, and Emerald Ruin 3. Once again, just some straight power upgrades. Ruby goes from 340 to 360 potency, Topaz from 270 to 300 potency, Emerald up from 170 to 180 potency. Level 58, Aether Charge Mastery and Dreadworm Trance. Welcome to Dreadworm Trance. Aether Charge has been given a much needed upgrade. Dreadworm Trance still has a 60 second cooldown, but has a better effect than just upping your potencies. Dreadworm Trance changes Ruin 3 and Outburst into better skills for 15 seconds. Level 58, Astral Impulse and Astral Flare. Astral Impulse costs 300 mana and does a massive 430 potency to a single target. Astral Flare does 180 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the original target. In theory, these are truly just better versions of Ruin 3 and Outburst, much stronger. However, they're also instant cast. This alone makes Dreadworm Trance infinitely more smooth to use than Aether Charge. And yet it gets better. Level 60, Astral Flow and Death Flare. Astral Flow is the same as Gemshine and Precious Brilliance. Alone, it does nothing. However, what happens when we go into Dreadworm Trance? It becomes Death Flare. Death Flare has a 20 second cooldown, so you get one Death Flare every time you go into Dreadworm Trance. It is an ability, so you can weave it between your Astral Impulses or Flares. It does a 500 potency Orbital Laser Strike on an enemy. All enemies within 5 yams of it get hit with a 200 potency worth of damage as well. So every time you go into Dreadworm Trance, on top of spamming your Ruin button, use one Death Flare and we can very easily fit it into our opener. So let's actually do that. Our opener is really the same as it always is, 
just with an extra Death Flare. So let's go through fast. Pre-pull, summon Carbuncle. Ruin 3, Dreadworm Trance, Astral Impulse, Energy Drain, Astral Impulse, Death Flare, Fester, Astral Impulse, Fester, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Pick a Lego, spend the stacks, etc., and after your stacks, you ruin three until you repeat. Obviously, if we're going to be waiting for raid buffs for energy drains and festers, we're going to put Death Flare where the party buffs will ideally all be active too. And because Astral Impulse is an instant cast unlike Ruin, we can fit in two abilities between spell casts. So we do! And we do want to do this, especially when we get to our last few added skills. But first, let's go through the karaoke opener quick. Ruin 3. Dreadworm Trance. Astral Impulse. Energy Drain. Astral Impulse. Death Flare. Fester. Astral Impulse. Fester. Astral Impulse. Astral Impulse. Astral Impulse. And then your Lego section hasn't changed at all. As I said, other than level 86, you kind of already know how to do the job. The added things we will get don't change the flow of the opener at all. Level 62, Enhanced Energy Siphon. Despite the name, this also applies to Energy Drain. Using Energy Drain or Siphon will grant you, in addition to the normal Aetherflow stacks, a stack of Further Ruin. We have only one use of Further Ruin. Level 62, Ruin 4. This costs 400 mana and is an instant cast AoE spell that is also worth it on single target. If you ever intend to Ruin 3, use Ruin 4 instead. And same for Outburst, because this does 430 potency to our target and 172 potency to all enemies within 5 yomps of the original target. Whenever we use Dreadworm Trance, we typically have some time available before the next one comes up. So instead of wasting that time on a Ruin 3, use Ruin 4. Also be sure to use the Ruin 4 at any point before your next Energy Drain or Siphon. Don't ignore how this is an instant cast either. If during your Ifrit phase you need movement, use Ruin 4, then go back to your Ruby Ruins. The when you use it is very flexible, just don't forget to use it entirely. Level 66. Searing Light. This skill single-handedly makes you want to use Place for Carbuncle. On a 120 second cooldown, this orders Carbuncle to cast Searing Light, buffing everyone within 15 yams of Carby by 3% power for a whopping 30 seconds. While 3% is really small, consider you can buff your entire team for 30 seconds. That's 8 players in a full party for a total of 24% 30 seconds. Further, anytime you should be using Searing Light, all your allies will normally be popping buffs too. They're multiplicative, making each added buff better than used individually. Add in a 10% buff from this other person, another 5% from another, they add and multiply together pretty well. So while it's very small, the length of time is one of the longest buffs in the game and makes everyone else have their buffs be stronger. Get this out every single time, and ideally aim your carbuncle. Which, speaking of aiming, pets have issues with taking commands while moving. It might delay the skill coming out. Absolutely try and use place to make Carby use the skill from a fixed position, especially for boss fights. In trash pulls, this isn't something you can really do too well, so just pop it when the tank stops pulling more enemies. And remember what I told you for Radiant Aegis, if Carbuncle is not on the field, you cannot use it. Summoning Eggies temporarily removes Carbuncle from the field, meaning for those few seconds, no Searing Light. Level 70, Enhanced Dreadworm Trance. We're already getting rid of Dreadworm Trance for Summon Bahamut. As a base, it is just Dreadworm Trance, but additionally, Carbuncle becomes Demi Bahamut, any attack after summoning Bahamut will lead him to use his own auto attack finally. Level 70, Worm Wave. This is the auto attack. 
It's 150 potency and he uses it every 1.5 seconds, and he'll attack 4 times for 600 potency total. While yes, it's a 15 second summon, he has an animation time before he's finally summoned. By the time he is, he'll only have time for a few uses. But that isn't all Bahamut does. Level 70, Enkindle Bahamut, and Ockmorn. Enkindle Bahamut orders Bahamut to use Ockmorn on a 20 second cooldown, which means you only get one use per summon Bahamut. And if you thought Death Flare was nice, Ockmorn makes it look like a laser pointer. Ockmorn does 1300 potency of damage to the target and 520 potency to any additional enemies hit. That's more damage than Death Flare does to the first enemy. Now remember, Searing Light is only a 3% damage boost, but on just Ockmorn, that's an extra 36 potency. That's not adding in any other attacks, any other buffs your allies are giving you. 1300 multiplied by multiple puffs makes this enormous. More than it already is. And now let's fit that and Searing Light into our opener, which basically, I'm not going to go over aside from the karaoke opener. Put Ockmorn where you already had Death Flare, and move Death Flare back to join the second Fester. We want to get Ockmorn out first if just because we want our big hits out as soon as possible, in the ideal buff positions. If we're going to accidentally forget Ockmorn or Death Flare and use it late, make a Death Flare, get Ockmorn out. As for Searing Light, we want to use it absolutely as soon as possible. It has such a long timer, and you can only use it while Carbuncle is available. So the moment our first attack hits, hit Searing Light, then go right into Dreadworm Trance for a bit of damage. We don't want to delay any longer than that. And we definitely want to pre-position Carbuncle, because as I said, he does not like movement and using skills. Pre-pull summon Carbuncle, place Carbuncle near the middle of the arena. Ruin 3. Searing Light, Dreadworm Trance, Astral Impulse, Energy Drain, Astral Impulse, Ockmorn, Fester, Astral Impulse, Death Flare, Fester, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Pick a Lego, etc, etc from there. And don't forget to use your Ruin 4 somewhere. And now, for several minutes of saying nothing new of value. Level 72. Ruin Mastery 3, Ruby Right, Topaz Right, and Emerald Right. This does nothing to Ruin, it changes your Gem Shine buttons. Rather than colored Ruins, we have Rights, and they are pretty big jumps in power. Ruby Right is 420 potency, Topaz Right, 320 potency, and Emerald Right is 220 potency. Otherwise, no changes to how they work. Level 74, Outburst Mastery. Outburst upgrades to Tri Disaster, and that includes your Precious Brilliance outbursts. Tri Disaster is a 120 potency AoE, Ruby Disaster is 170 potency, Topaz Disaster is 130 potency, Emerald Disaster is 90 potency. That's it, that's all it does. Level 80, Enhanced Summon Bahamut and Summon Phoenix. So this doesn't directly upgrade Summon Bahamut. Summon Bahamut will become Summon Phoenix when it ends, and shares the same cooldown as Summon Bahamut. From now on, you go back and forth for a full rotation of Summon Bahamut, use Legos, Summon Phoenix, use Legos, repeat. But let's actually talk about how Phoenix differs from Bahamut. The differences begin immediately when you summon it. Upon spawning, Phoenix uses Everlasting Flight. This is a 21 second long heal over time or Hot. Divide by 3 and we get 7 ticks of the hot. Each tick is 100 potency of healing for 700 total potency. And unlike Physic, this scales off of intelligence, so it's actually useful as a heal. Fountain of Fire is the Phoenix version of Astral Impulse, doing a slightly higher 520 potency of damage. And Brand of Purgatory is our Astral Flare, doing 240 potency per enemy. These make Phoenix slightly stronger than Bahamut. Scarlet Flame is the Phoenix version of the auto attack. Enkindle Bahamut becomes Enkindle Phoenix. Enkindle Phoenix has Phoenix use Revelation, which is the same power as Ark Morn. Astral Flow is not Death Flare or even a version of Death Flare. 
Instead, we have Rekindle, which has three layers. Essentially, you want to put this always on the tank if you need the TLDR of this. When you press Rekindle, if you're looking at an enemy, it will apply to you. If you are targeting an ally, it will use Rekindle on them. Firstly, it heals 400 potency. Again, int-based, so it actually does real healing. Secondly, Rekindle is placed on the ally for 30 seconds. If at any point within those 30 seconds the target falls below 75% HP, Rekindle will become Undying Flame. For 15 seconds, Undying Flame will heal the target for 200 potency per tick. In total, that is 1000 potency of healing, on top of the 400 from the initial use of Rekindle. That is a lot of healing. Anytime you can, take the moment to put Rekindle on the tank. Your healer and tank will be helped a lot. Just don't forget to use Fountain of Fire or Brand of Purgatory while you're doing so. And hope that that healing is actually needed, which a lot of the time it isn't needed. Level 82, Outburst Mastery 2. This upgrades your precious brilliance attacks once again to Catastrophe level skills. Ruby Catastrophe is 180 potency, Topaz Catastrophe is 140 potency, and Emerald Catastrophe is 100 potency. Really, just enjoy the shiny graphics and slightly bigger hits. Level 84, Ruin Mastery 4. This is just more upgrades. Ruin 3 is 310 potency, Ruby Rite 430, Topaz Rite 330, and Emerald Rite 230. That's it, moving on. Level 86, Elemental Mastery. All right, here we go. Your final real skill. Elemental Mastery is a final upgrade to Astral Impulse. Using Summon Ifrit, Titan, or Garuda will grant additional effects. But how to use or access these effects differs. Starting with Ifrit, we have Crimson Cyclone and Crimson Strike. Crimson Cyclone is a gap closer costing zero mana and has no cast time, but is a spell that rolls the GCD. Anywhere within 25 yalms of the enemy, you will rush towards them and do a 5 yalm AoE around it. This is big enough for you to reach the boss from anywhere in most arenas. The target gets hit with a 430 potency attack and all enemies around it 150 potency. Crimson Cyclone then becomes Crimson Strike. Crimson Strike has the same power and effects, but is a melee attack. You must be within three yalms of the enemy to use Crimson Strike. If you walk away, you can't use it. And you must follow up Crimson Cyclone with Crimson Strike. Because this is a combo. If you try to use Ruby right after Cyclone, you lose the strike. Use a normal Ruin 3 or 4, lose the strike. So with Summon Ifrit, you can use Crimson Cyclone first, after the first Ruby Right, or after both Ruby Rights, but you must follow the Cyclone with the Strike. If you want to slam, you must also jam. Hey you, what you gonna do? Not gap close into an AoE, I hope. Titan gives us Mountain Buster, an ability, not a spell like the Crimson skills, that does 150 potency to the first enemy, and 45 potency for every additional enemy. Using either Topaz Right or Topaz Catastrophe will turn Astral Flow into Mountain Buster. So after every Topaz attack, you weave in Mountain Buster. We'll see this more in the opener. This is also why Titan is the Lego we use first for openers, really. However, this is pretty poor AoE overall. Ifrit and Garuda are stronger for AoE, with Garuda on top, I believe. Speaking of Garuda, she gives us Slipstream. This is a spell with a massive 3 second cast time and 3.5 second recast timer. This does 430 potency to the target and 150 potency to all enemies around it, within 5 yalms. However, what this does different is it puts down a wind puddle. This is a dot that hits all enemies standing in it for 15 seconds for 30 potency. In total, that's an additional 150 potency per enemy. That dot plus the normal 1.5 second cast time for your Emerald Catastrophes are why I believe this is the top summon for AoE. But it may be if for overall. You can't really go wrong between the two provided all of the enemies are properly positioned. Just make sure Titan is the last one for AoE. Which also, Slipstream can have some issues in some bosses. 
if the boss moves around a lot for mechanics, or must be moved by the tank for dodging, it may be moved out of the slipstream puddle. Try and order your summons around this movement if you can. And now let's talk about the opener, our final opener. Instead of going over a full cycle of trance and Legos, let's just go over what typically is considered the opener window, which will be up through our Titan Lego window. Pre-pull, summon Carbuncle. Place Carbuncle near the middle of the arena. Ruin 3, Searing Light, Dreadworm Trance, Astral Impulse, Energy Drain, Astral Impulse, Ockmorn, Fester, Astral Impulse, Death Flare, Fester, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Astral Impulse, Summon Titan, Topaz Right, Mountain Buster, Topaz Right, Mountain Buster, Topaz Right, Mountain Buster, Topaz Right, Mountain Buster, Summon Garuda or Ifrit. Now again, Titan ends up being the best fit for single target on average, so we use that. And other than what we already discussed previously, there's no real optimizations or special notes to make here. We mentioned why Searing Light early, why placing Energy Drain later for buffs. Otherwise, you're just using the skills as you're intended to on the most basic level. This is what I meant in the intro about it being a one-button job and such. As long as you're using the skills constantly, you can't really do much wrong. And because of how summoner works, for AoE, your AoE rotation is exactly the same as single target, just swapping your Legos around. But less whining and such, let's do the karaoke opener. Ruin 3. Searing Light, Dreadworm Trance. Astral Impulse, Energy Drain. Astral Impulse, Ockmorn, Fester. Astral Impulse, Death Flare, Fester. Astral Impulse. Astral Impulse. Astral Impulse. Summon Titan. Topaz Right, Mountain Buster. Topaz Right, Mountain Buster. Topaz Right, Mountain Buster. Topaz Right, Mountain Buster. Summon Garuda or Ifrit. Level 88, Enhanced Radiant Aegis. This turns Radiant Aegis into a skill with charges. You can now hold two charges. The moment you use one charge, it will begin to charge the next use. If you haven't been using Radiant Aegis like I told you to, please be using it. This is so good for survival, both solo and in parties. Level 90, Enkindle 2. Summon Ifrit 2, Titan 2, and Garuda 2. Our final skill is a lot of flash for very small potency boosts. Our summons are upgraded and now summon the actual primals themselves. They come in, do one big attack like normal, and leave. But now they're bigger and flashier. They all do a 700 potency AoE on the target and all enemies within 5 yams take 280 potency of damage. So instead of the weird cone or being around Titan himself, it's always on the target. So yeah, our final skill is just one final power boost and slightly less janky AoE. Enjoy that. Also, uh, slash pet size all small? You'll thank me later. Thank you for watching this Summoner 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub. Those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Ann and Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies.